Oh, hello, eighth graders. How's everyone doing today? Oh, Caesar, you're here. Caesar, my man, we've been talking chapter 14, causes of the Civil War. What led to our nation dividing and splitting up? Well, all week long, I've been helping these young boys and girls with their chapter 14 work. And we've been answering these questions about the things that caused the Civil War in the United States. What divided our country? We've been talking Compromise of 1850, the Fugitive Slave Act, the novel Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe, the Kansas-Nebraska Act, John Brown, the Dred Scott decision from the Supreme Court. And today, we get to a guy you probably heard of once or twice before, Abraham Lincoln and his rise to prominence in politics during this time in American history, mainly because of his strong stance against slavery. So let's whisk our way to Illinois. Whoosh. Caesar, are you with me? Uh -huh. 1850s, Abraham Lincoln decides, I'm gonna try a run in politics, specifically a Senate seat in the state of Illinois. His opponent, Stephen Douglas. Now the two gentlemen begin a series of debates across the state of Illinois, arguing about why they should get elected. But the main reason people are watching and listening to these debates is what these gentlemen have to say about the issue of slavery. And the one that's really raising a lot of eyebrows and getting a lot of attention across the whole US of A is Abraham Lincoln. And he becomes a rock star and the forefront of the Republican Party for his strong stance against slavery. Now, spoiler alert, Lincoln actually loses the election to Douglas. He wins the Senate seat. But Lincoln vows not to quit his political career. We'll see him come back. But the debates now, famous in history for setting the precedent or the example for political opponents to get their platform ideas out to the public. And when these debates started getting televised with Nixon and Kennedy when they ran for president in 1960, it ramped the political spectrum and the microscope on these politicians even more so. And nowadays come October, November, right before the election, we want to hear what these political opponents have to say in the form of the debate. Where do they stand on the issues? And these debates, again, can found their root history in the Lincoln-Douglas debates from the Illinois State Senate. Well, fast forward to 1860, and Lincoln decides, I don't just want the Senate seat from Illinois. I want to become president of this whole country because, again, He's become a rock star around the nation and especially with the Republican Party. But he's seen as an enemy by the Southern states who don't want someone who's gonna get elected as president who's gonna to try to outlaw slavery, which no doubtedly he will. So the South, they rec uh, uh, nominate their own candidate, John Breckinridge. Stephen Douglas also runs. John Bell is a fourth candidate who runs in this election. And looking at the map, you can see the North voted one way, Abraham Lincoln, that's right, they voted for Abe, and the South voted for a much different way. Now, the end result, Abe wins. But look at the map, it shows how fragmented the country was. And look at the percentages. Abe won the whole election with less than 40% of the vote, 39.8% of the vote. Would you feel comfortable with the president of your country that less than 40% of the people voted for. And a lot of Southerners did not. And as a result of Abraham Lincoln getting elected, the Southern states decide, that's it, we're leaving. And Southern secession or seceding begins. One Southern state after another leaves and my friends, when I say they leave, they start their own country, the Confederate States of America. They form their own capital, they have their own currency, they write their own constitution, they elect their own president in the form of Jefferson Davis, this guy right up here. They have their own flag, 
My friends, they just left. They said, we're not going to be a part of a country that Abraham Lincoln is in charge of. He's going to destroy slavery. Peace. We're out of here. And thus, the Confederate States of America was born, and the Civil War will soon start in South Carolina at Fort Sumter. When it does, Abraham Lincoln's goal, I want to restore the Union. I want to bring the Confederacy back. I want us to be one country again. But it was his election, him being put in charge as President of the United States, that the Southerners felt they had no choice, and they seceded and started their own country. That was the story of Abraham Lincoln, my friends. Again, whose rise to power in this country and his election as president in 1860 is what led the Southern states to leave and start their own country. So as far as the question goes, who won the election of 1860? What the Southern states do as a result, it was Abe and the Southern states left and formed their own country. When we get back next week, we'll talk about the first shots fired at Fort Sumter in South Carolina and the war officially beginning. But until then, Caesar, what shall we say? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for doing the work, kids. I appreciate it.